Well, here we go. We're back at it. All right. I know it's been a little while. I appreciate you guys' patience. Um, but it's uh, it's a never-ending job here. So uh, you can see right now I'm getting ready to work on some pro sealing. That's where I left off last time was working on the pro sealing tank. And that's what we're going to be doing this whole time is continuing working on the tank and working with pro seal. Uh, specifically, last time I showed you, I worked on some of those stiffeners on the inside. They look sort of like this, not real pretty. Uh, I have since gone back and put uh, a whole bunch of Pro Seal over each of the rivets so that uh, no fuel can leak out. Uh, Pro Seal, by the way, someone asked me what it is. I'm not exactly sure, but it feels like it's like a vulcanizing rubber, like it's a two-part vulcanizing rubber, uh, sort of like an epoxy, uh, but it turns into this like rubbery hard stuff. Uh, that was my technical term. Uh, here I'm working on the gas cap, so this is uh, the fuel point, and you can see that how I'm applying the Pro Seal is just with a popsicle stick uh, and trying to keep my area clean with paper towels, which, by the way, is impossible, but putting, uh, putting the rivets through the backside. So first I, I apply the Pro Seal, uh, and then I push rivets through, and what that does is some of the Pro Seal will kind of go through the rivet hole, push the rivets through, tape over each of the rivet holes in this case, then I'll lay this whole piece back down, and I put enough tape over to cover it so I don't get Pro Seal in the hole itself, lay the piece down onto the holes, and then I'm back riveting each of the rivets. That's how I did this particular piece, uh, and by the way, I, I screwed up, and you'll see that that little piece that's bouncing around there in the bottom right that actually needs to be rivet in place. And whoops, I forgot. So I had to go and uh, drill one out and put it back. I even, even afterwards, I, I saw it, saw it and I went, ah, crap. I did eventually go back and rivet into place. And here you can see the uh, pro seal goop covering the entire back plate, which I absolutely did not need to go uh, crazy and cover the whole plate. I just needed to cover the little rivets, but I had so much extra at one point uh, that I was starting to dab it on all the rivets and then it just started to kind of, you know, get pa plastered all over everything because it's just messy. And I said, ah, screw it. And I just covered the whole thing. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. And you can see the front side of it here. It's mostly clean. There's still a little bit of extra pro seal on that. I just kind of gave it a wipe with the rag. Uh, so this is what the front side of it looks like. So the rivets are all seated and there's a little bit of pro seal leaking out behind some of the rivets, which is actually a good thing. It shows that those are sealed, which is awesome. Now, the thing is, in my last video, I talked about how I'm having gallbladder issues. Uh, I have since gone to the hospital. I've had uh, CAT scans, ultrasounds, you know, uh, uh, everything, the HIDA scans, you, you name it, they've done everything. They didn't find a thing. Uh, so apparently, and, and the pain is completely gone at this point. So I have no idea what it was. Eh, but thank you very much, everyone that, that sent a message asking how I was doing. I'm fine. Uh, here I'm working on continuing to add rivets to the, uh, or to, sorry, the Pro Seal to the fuel exhaust uh, you know, the, the fuel port where it leaks out if it's, if it's too full. And I'm using a little bit of tape to go around in circles around it to, again, do the same thing I was doing before, kind of have a clean area where I want to work. And then I'll take the, uh, the part off and s scrape it up so that I have, you know, a nice s scraped, um, scored area for the pro seal to stick to. And I do that at both on both parts. And then I clean them off using a little bit of uh, macro paint thinner or whatever you got. Just very little. It takes It doesn't take much. And just make sure you get it good and clean. And then you got to go through and measure your Pro Seal. And you'll see me do this a number of things. When I measure out the Pro Seal, it's a 10 to 1 ratio. And I have been using uh, this little kitchen scale to kind of pull the goop out and, uh, you know, measure it one at a time, and I measure with the popsicle stick still on there, so I take that into account. Uh, but you'll see me, I'll, I'll dollop out the white stuff and then dollop up a tiny piece of the black stuff and use the scale, and then it's just mix it around until it has a not quite black, kind of a, a, a dirty chalk color when you mix it all together. It's, it's not as dark as the black. Like, the black stuff is just pitch, but the white is super white. When you mix it all together, it's like a dirty chalk color, very dark chalk color. And that seems to be what it should be. But then I go through and I do just like I do everything else. I put a couple Clicos on the backside to hold it in and then I push some rivets through. And in this particular one, I get to use the squeezer. 
and get to squeeze those rivets together. And it actually worked out really nicely. Uh, as with all things Pro Seal, there's absolutely no chance of keeping things clean. So just know that you're going to get all manner of goop all over everything to inclu include your, uh, your squeezer. And you see me try to keep things clean. I keep going back. Just do yourself in favor and buy stock in paper towels because you use a lot when you work with this stuff. There's just no amount uh, of, 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 there's just no way to keep it clean. It's just impossible. And at this point, I realized, you know what? I don't want any ProSeal to get inside that hole because I'll screw up those threads. And so I, I screwed in a piece all the way as far in and made it go all the way through. And ultimately, it looked like this. So this is what it looks like when I've got everything all seated and with the Pro Seal, and then I go through and I start dabbing on Pro Seal on the backside on the shop heads of the rivets uh, to you know do the final seal, and those came out looking like this. Not bad, a little goopy, and you can see some of the paper towel got stuck, so I'll clean that off. And then on the front side, here's what it looked like once everything was cleaned up, and I pulled all the bluing off, which it, it looked pretty good, honestly. I think there's just a little bit of Pro Seal still sticking out uh, at the top there that I can scrape off or use a bit of um, mech to clean off. No big deal. And then I back to doing what you will do a billion times, and that's reading instructions. In this case, I was specifically looking at this rib piece, this, this tiny rib. Uh, that's the next part and how to correctly seal it in. So again, keeping in mind that this is a wet fuel tank, the entire inside of there is going to be wet. This particular piece is the end of the tank. So it's very important that this piece, when you seat it and seal it, it is sealed 100%. And I mean, you know, massively sealed because you don't want to leak. Here I'm going through and doing the exact same thing I've been doing all along, which is putting the uh, painter's tape on so that I have a sort of a, a plan of where I'm going to be applying the Pro Seal. I go through and I, I buff it up and scrape it up real good with the uh, Brillo pad, uh, not Brillo pad, a Scotch Bright pad. Uh, just getting it good and, and uh, scratched up, again, scored up so I have a place for the stuff to stick to. Uh, and then it's a matter of going through and cleaning it off using, uh, again, it's just paint thinner or, or Mac, one or the other. I, I think I'm using paint thinner here. Um, I'm not sure if they're the same thing. I actually don't know. But anyways, either way, I, I'm using that to clean off the, the area uh, before getting it ready and getting it seated. Uh, and... You know, continually making sure I've got it seated, uh, you know, fit, test fitting. I'm, I do a lot of test fitting. Uh, but once I have it all test fitted, I'm happy with where it is. I get out the Pro Seal goop and start the process of uh, measuring again. And this time I knew I was going to need a bunch, so I got a whole bunch of it out. And I'm using just a simple little paper plate that, uh, paper plate, and again, popsicle sticks, um, a lot of popsicle sticks. And then it's just a matter of, again, dolloping out a 10 to 1 ratio of the black to white, and then mix, 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 mix until you have a very good mixture. And it takes a while to get it all good and mixed, but once you do, you'll know because, again, it's got that chalk. And then you just apply it. And I just kind of smear it on. And this is what it looks like once I had it all smeared on. It sort of looks like a, a cake batter. And some of it is, uh, again, you can kind of see some of it is pushed through the holes to the other side, which is exactly what I want. And once I've got it all happy there. I, I go through and I, I uh, Clico it all back up and begin the process of adding rivets. So in this case, I'm Clicoing every other hole. Um, on one side, I think I Clicoed the majority of the holes. On the other, I did every other hole. But then uh, you put in the rivets. And again, luckily, because we're on the end, I can use the squeezer and you get a nice, good, clean squeeze. I did lower it back down into the uh, to the form here. I keep raising and lowering it just for convenience sake, but I wanted to make sure it was seated correctly, so I lowered it back down to make sure nothing was shifting. And then once I realized, yeah, it was fine, I went ahead and propped it back up on the paper towel. But it's a, uh, here I am going through and squeezing all of those rivets on this end piece. Uh, and yeah, it wasn't too bad, honestly. I have to think, or I have to say that, you know, using the Pro Seal. 
I'm starting to get used to it. So I, I really don't like it. Um, and people have asked me multiple times, you know, do you regret not getting the quick build? And my answer is a, a very loud, resounding, absolutely yes. Because this stuff is just terrible to work with. It, it has sapped my desire to work on the plane quite a bit, which is unfortunate. But um, I'm getting used to it. And I don't think it's that bad. It just gets everywhere. It does stink. It's very stringy. It's it's sticky. It's it's just a pain in the butt to work with. But once you get used to it, all right, I guess it's not too bad. Um, here I'm doing the same thing. I'm using the popsicle stick and the, what was left on the paper plate, and I'm just dolloping it on. And there you go. I've got a thick, thick coat of Pro Seal, top and bottom. I've talked to people. I've showed it to them, and they're like, "Yeah, that's fine. That'll work." Um, a couple people say, eh, you might be using too much, but other people are saying, you know, honestly, it's inside the gas tank. What does it mean to use too much? I mean, it, it, it can't, you can't overseal it, which makes a lot of sense, actually. You know, I don't ever want to have to get back into this tank. So I guess using a little too much Pro Seal is probably better than not using enough, because if you don't use enough, uh, then you're in trouble. So, yeah. So there's that, um, and here's a picture of what it looks like on the outside after I got it all said and done, and this is actually days later when it was sealed and dried and, and hard as rubber, and yeah, I don't think anything's going to leak through that. <laughs> And then I move to the next rib. So you see, I've done the same thing. I've got masking tape all along there, kind of masking off the area where I'm going to be applying the Pro Seal. And then I just laid along the uh, Pro Seal squeegee style here using a uh, popsicle stick. And I put it on nice and thick so that you have a good solid layer. Uh, again, my intent is to allow it to squeeze out through the holes so that the holes on the outside uh, will have plenty of Pro Seal, so that when I put the rivet in, it kind of it kind of uh, squeezes some of that Pro Seal between uh, the the rivet head and the skin and whatnot. Again, it just it just makes for a better seal, I feel. So, and you can see by the way that the Pro Seal is just a mess to work with. It's goopy and stinks, and eh, it is what it is, but it's not fun. So, that's this part. And then for my next trick, installing the rib. So we just slide it in, uh, pushing it down into the skin on top of the Pro Seal. So now you've got this, uh, this layer between, uh, between the skins of Pro Seal. I take off my gloves because at that point they were pretty much wasted. Uh, and then I, I Clico everything together, and you are going to goop up your Clicos with Pro Seal. It's a good idea to have a glass. Uh, container, you know, bowl or something like that that you can put uh, paint thinner or mech in that you could drop those in once you're done with them. Otherwise, that Pro Seal will goop them up pretty pretty good. Again, it, it's basically a vulcanized rubber, so it'll ruin them. Uh, this is a uh, this is not too bad actually. It's it's not a bad process at this point. You are very much on the clock though. Uh, once you get the Pro Seal all mixed up, you only have so much time uh, where it's manageable. After a while, it'll actually thicken up, and you really can't use it very well anymore. Uh, so that's just, don't rush, but you really can't take your time. Like, you can't be uh, lackadaisical about it. All right, well, then uh, then it's a matter of starting to rivet them. Uh, I went ahead and I put one rivet in, and I put a piece of masking tape on top, which is how I do it. Uh, and... Did this one test to make sure it looked good and just to see how much of this Pro Seal crap I get all over my uh, bucking bar. And the answer is not that much, actually. I did, I kept it at this angle, uh, sort of laying over with the, with the mouth like this so that it, it would be easy for the camera to see what I was doing. Uh, in the long run, I found that that was actually not helpful for me. So my piece of advice is, and it's what I did later, is to, is to set the form up straight up and down and stand on a stool or something like that so that you're working over the top of it down into it uh, because the Pro Seal doesn't make this easy. One, two, it's really stringy. And so as you buck on it and then you pull the tool away, you've got this line of Pro Seal hanging down uh, and, you know, that's, that's not good. And ultimately it was just easier to work with it down over the top of it than into it like this. So that's... Uh, that's my one bit of advice there. 
I would also suggest doing more than one rivet at a time, like trying to do one rivet and then reset everything to do the next rivet. It just takes too long. Uh, so uh, what I ended up doing here is I put a Clico in every other hole and then you'll see me go through and rivet and move and rivet and move and rivet and move it. I mean, and just, it goes much, much more quickly that way, which again, you're kind of on the clock. And throughout this whole thing, you see me going back and forth and picking up a paper towel and cleaning off a piece because just, it's on everything. The Pro Seal gets on everything. There's no keeping stuff clean. Uh, so do yourself a favor. Have some handy paper towels, a way to easily grab them. Uh, I thought about maybe getting a washcloth and keeping it like just dipped down into a uh, bucket of mech or paint thinner or something for when you need to clean off a tool that you know you're not going to be using. Uh, or, or even when you are going to be using it again. I mean, just the stuff is uh, gets everywhere. It's terrible. And uh, also, I just wanted to say I've had some more people inquire whether or not I would be up for visitation. You know, people want to come out and hang out and, and see this stuff in person or just sit down and uh, shoot the shit. And I'm all for it, guys. If anyone wants to fly out and hang out in my hangar for a day or something like that or just chat, go out to lunch or something, whatever. Sure, let's do it. I, I joke in my previous uh, videos that I'll put you to work. Uh, if you want to work, I'll put you to work. If you want to just look it over and talk about all the things, hey, I'm happy to do that too. Uh, I have no intention of actually putting you to work, uh, mainly because I don't know what I'm doing. And I can prove that. So right here, you see me lean over to get one of the rivets, and what did I do? Oh, God damn it! Yeah, I leaned into the pro seal that was on the counter. I had that little paper plate full of pro seal. So that white t-shirt, uh, which was an old white t-shirt, thankfully, and it was all sweaty and nasty, but yeah, now it's got pro seal all over it. It is now garbage. The, if you get pro seal on your clothing, it's done. Just throw it away or use it as a rag. This, this shirt is now a shop rag. It's funny now. It wasn't all that funny at the time. So once I got all the pro seal set and in place I went back over it with the popsicle stick and made sure that all of the corners were fully covered and all the rivet heads were completely and totally covered. It feels like you're using a lot and you are but in the end like I said before eh, who cares you, no one's gonna see it and here in this picture you can see I've pulled the painters tape up so it looks nice and clean or as clean as I can get it. Anyway, guys, thanks very much. That's it for this time, and we'll be back at it uh, in a couple days. Sweet. See you guys later. Oh, God damn it.